One more thing, for example, you remove the cans, the can shaft, you remove them completely, you're gonna take the timing out. So to put it back together, all you have to do is to set this mark. Uh, let me see, let me try to, oh, yeah. That mark, you see this mark? You have to align that mark with this line over here in the back. The other one is right here, it's just in behind this plate. It's hard to see it. It's behind the plate. Hey, uh, you barely can see it over there. Put it like that, and then set the timing on the back. And that's all you need to do in case you replace the cam chaff. So now all I'm gonna do is to take these cam uh, caps to the machine shop to get a repair. In this case, they're gonna repair the thread. I have the can shaft caps here. They already fixed. Uh, you can see there, there is a new thread and they did to them. Let me try to focus. You can see it better now. See, this is the new thread. It's no longer a helicoil. It's like kind of a cylinder with a thread on it, which precedes a higher torque than just a helicoil. The helicoil is the one that comes originally with the cam housing caps and both of them are the same way. You can see the other one is over there all the way in. So it's really hard to see it, but it's the same stuff on it. If you replace the cam housing with a new one, it will come with helicoils on these cam housing caps. Now it's time to put the cam housing caps back on place in the same position where we remove them that's right we mark them uh, put a number on them this is the number one as you can see but before that we're gonna clean them we're gonna blow some air around it to remove any dirt or any metal around them to prevent any damage to any component once we start the engine so, all the caps are clean now I'm going to clean the can shaft make sure to clean them very well inspect them for any damage if you see any damage will be better to replace it at this moment because it's very easy right now you just pull the can shaft out once the can shaft are clean i'm gonna apply some engine assembly grease on the uh, can shaft in this area in all the seven caps you can also apply engine oil okay there is grease all over the can shaft now if you apply any excessive grease, you can put it on the camshaft gears for uh, lubrication. So now I'm going to install the seven caps. We have a number here, remember to install it in the same position. And it has some guys over here. You're gonna align those guys with those over there. You cannot miss that. It only can fit in one position, so there is no way you're gonna put it backwards. With all the cam caps on place, now I'm going to install these 10 millimeter bolts. They go here. I want to install them all. And I'm going to torque them to 22 foot pounds, as you can see here. All the 10 millimeter bolts. All the bolts are tied to 22 foot pounds. The next step is to install the rocker arm shaft, both of them, the intake and the exhaust. Before installing them, check the rollers and check this pad over here, because it is very common to see damage on this pad over here. The two rocker arm shafts are on place. Now the next step is to install the springs on the J-brake. I'm gonna install all the six springs. All the springs are on place, as you can see. Double check, make sure that they are in the proper area. Now I'm going to install all the rocker arm shaft bolts. I have new bolts here. It's always recommended to install new bolts when something like this happens to the rocker arms. All the rocker arm shaft bolts are on place, as you can see. On the intake, make sure to install this spacer. This is a very important part and it has a side you see it has this little groove over here it goes like this don't put it in the ground position because you're gonna uh, get the proper uh, in the improper torque or you can damage something 
So now I'm going to tie all of them and then I'm going to tore them to specifications. And the specifications are 36 to 41 plus 90 degrees, which is a lot of torque. Follow the sequence how to tie them for the X house. Here is the sequence too. If you are installing a new cam housing, be careful when you are tightening these bolts, especially when you are turning the 90 degrees. Make sure to pay attention because whenever you are putting the 90 degrees on these bolts, they can easily strip. So make sure to feel how the ball is doing when you are tightening it. If you feel that the ball is not gonna hold the torque, leave it the way it is. Don't give more than that, otherwise you're gonna end up messing with the uh, cam housing caps and you will need to replace them again. Okay, all the bolts are tied to the specifications. Remember, 36 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees, which equals around 100 pounds. It's a lot for these cam housing caps, but that's what the manufacturers require for the D15 engine broker arms. If for any reason you are not sure about the torque in the rocker arm shaft, you will need to remove the bolts again and reinstall them and give them the torque again because if you're not sure, do the whole process again. And very important, I wanna say it again, if you are installing a new cam housing, be sure to feel the torque of the pole when you are giving the 90 degrees because it's a very fragile piece. The original cam housing caps are very fragile. So if you give the 90 degrees and you feel then the 90 degrees tour is getting kind of weak, hold it right there. Don't give more than that. Otherwise you will mess up with the uh, cam housing cap and you will need to replace it again. In my opinion, I prefer to take the cam housing cap to the machine shop so they can install a steel uh, uh, cylinder thread on them because it holds more torque than the helicoil that comes originally from the manufacturer. You saw the video at the beginning and the engine was making a really loud noise because of the bolts were completely loose. So. If you don't do it right, that's gonna happen to your engine. So now I'm just gonna install the Jake brakes solenoids on both sides. And I'm going to reinstall the cam housing with everything inside in the engine. Uh, for details about that, you can check my other video, the cam housing seal replacement. Okay. The cam housing is on place, as you can see. For details about how to install the cam housing, you can check my other video, as I say many times already. But I just want to make sure that you know where to look at it. Uh, the video is going to be on the description below or at the end screen on this video. So if for any reason you're planning to adjust the valve, this is the time where you have to adjust the valve. Uh, if you don't want to adjust the valve, that's okay. If you are using the same components, especially the rocker arm. So now I'm just gonna put everything back together. Okay, all the components are back on place. So hopefully the engine will run with no problems. So I'm going to start right now. It's the first time I start the engine. You have to make sure that the, air, that the oil pressure is around 75. If the pressure drops for some reason, that means there is, there is a leak in the cam housing area. Now you can hear the engine noise.
it is better than before, right? So now all I have to do is to check around the back housing and expect for leaks. Three miles at all and let the engine go wild, use the J-brake and let the RPM go high so you can hear any noise. Now I'm just going to rev the engine up. There is no weird noises, no knocking noises. Now I'm going to use the J-brake. I'm going to activate the J-brake here. And I'm gonna rev it up. So everything looks all right. So there is no weird noises, no knocking noises. That's one important thing. Then you need to look after replacing the cam housing caps or the cam housing uh, because this is a very delicate piece of the engine if something is wrong and you rev up the engine and you feel a noise a knocking noise or something uh, stop the engine right there and open the cam housing uh, the ball cover in this case to inspect what's wrong because if you let the truck go like that um, later it's gonna be a serious problem or the problem then I just fix then the bolts is stripped I mean the uh, ball comes out from the cam housing caps is a very common problem on the 15 engines but not because the cam caps are uh, broken because usually the cam caps can resist the torque only once they are meant for that so when a technician, mechanic, or anybody does the job to replace the cam housing seal, uh, they have to torque it again to the specific specification of the engine. But this cannot resist that much torque. So this problem happens. So pretty much this is all I'm going to show you. I did a lot on this truck. This is a big job to do especially without replacing the cam housing it's easier when you replace the cam housing because you just get the parts and it's faster but i don't trust the new cam housing because the heli coil is so weak and that requires a lot of torque and it's very fragile so if you spend more than one thousand dollars in a piece and it breaks again i think it's not even worth the money so if you have any questions about this video, just comment below and I will answer them as soon as I can. If you like the video, please uh, help me to get some support. You can check my video description below. So you can send support to my channel so I can continue making videos like this to help everybody on the way and on their shops to keep these engines running with no problems like the video share subscribe and thank you for watching my videos